In this video, we're going, now we're going to look at page 27 of Drake's data structures and algorithms in Java. And in particular, we're going to implement the play method. So far, we have the ability to create a new Beetle game object, but it doesn't do anything. It just declares a couple of fields and instantiates them. So, uh, or initializes them. So what we're going to do is looking at page 27, we see the first two lines of the play method declare a local variable called player, and it's set to 1, and it declares a local object called bug, which is set to be bug1. The purpose for this is that we're going to use this in the game loop. If you think about a game as being played with two people going back and forth, these are the values that we will flip back and forth as players take turn, take turns playing uh, the Beetle game. Now I'm modifying Peter's code here where he uses the not operator to flip things. I'm going to actually explicitly say that while the bug is the bug is not complete, that is, while bug dot is complete returns false, we want to keep looping. All right, so if the current bug is ever completed, we will stop looping. That is what that line of code says. And this one actually took me a while to figure out as well. The if statement was written with an, a not as well, which personally I think is a very confusing way to program. So I always try and make explicit what I'm doing. Um, here it says, if we take a turn with the current player and current bug, and it equals false, we'll do these things. All right, And we haven't written the take turn method yet. So until we write it, it's not clear what's going on. Now let's look at that for a moment. Take turn with the current player and current bug. And if it is false, we're going to do something. Now, I looked ahead, and what it turns out is, if you successfully add a body part to your beetle, you get to go again. So, the value, so what happens is, if we did add a part then we're not going to switch players. We're going to keep the current player. Whereas if we don't add a part, the next player gets to go. That's pretty subtle. And it's I'm not certain if I would want to write this this way if this were my software and I had to maintain it over a long period of time. So it's up to you whether it's worth thinking about how you might revise that for clarity, or if you think it's perfectly clear it is, as it is. So this is the code that swaps players. If the current player is player 1, then we're going to set it to player 2, and we're going to set the bug to bug 2. However, if the current player is not, then we're going to flip back to player 1. So that's all that if statement is doing, is swapping back and forth between the two players. The last thing we do and this is where I actually got this wrong, is we then print, print out who won. So you can see I'm writing this in the while loop. Now it just so happens that I caught this before I had to compile my code. And here I am, I'm checking to see where my brackets are. Um, and that's when I think, oh, this, this must go somewhere else. And you can see I'm getting rid of a spare bracket that I don't need, and that's the while loop. That's the if. And then I paste in my code, because if we come out of the loop, it means that somebody's bug is complete, at which point we should print out who wins and be done. And that's what those two lines of code do. It is up to you to figure out why that last system.out.out.print line actually prints the bug. And, as you can see, we haven't written take turn yet, which is the subject of the next video.